So today I'm going to talk about a terminal dictionary by the name of dict. And the reason I'm doing this is because the installation process isn't as straightforward as I would have thought it would be. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So the reason that I'm doing this video is because at least on Arch Linux, I don't know about any other distros, the package for Dict isn't actually working straight out of the box. And that's not because there's any problems with it, it's just because it comes with a very stripped down version of the package. So if on Ubuntu it works properly or on anything else it works perfectly fine, then I understand you're not going to get anything out of this. But on Arch, it doesn't work out of the box. So the reason, or the main reason at least, it doesn't work out of the box is because it doesn't come with any dictionaries by default. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually install the main program. So I've already got it installed, but the way you would do that is pac sudo pacman-s, make sure the rest of your packages are up to date first before you do this, and then addict with a D on the end. So the program we actually have to run, we don't have this D on the end, but for the package there is that there. So just keep that in mind. So I've already got it installed, so that will be done pretty much instantly, but it's a very small package, so it won't take that long anyway. Okay, so if we try to run it with the D on the end, this actually will show us one of the other errors that exists. So this is the dictionary error. So if you get this error, that means you don't actually have any dictionaries installed. So on Arch, all of the extra dictionaries are available on the AUR. So the dictionary we're going to use is a English to English dictionary. So if we just look at the Arch Linux wiki for dict, that's where I'm getting pretty much all of this information from. So the dictionary that we're going to use is this one right here. So dict-wn. I'll put the link for this one in the description down below so you can just copy that directly from there. So if we go to this link right now, that will load up this page and we'll copy the git clone URL for this. Go back over to here. And then we go git clone and copy that. I'll zoom in on this so you can see it a bit better. So we just write git clone and then the AUR URL. We'll copy that and that will take a couple of seconds to do. We'll CD into this directory and what do we call it? Dict WN. Okay. And then obviously you should be checking that the package is fine, but I already know that this one works fine. So we're going to run make package dash SI and that will then try to install it. That will take a couple of seconds to do. Actually, it might be a bit longer because this is a pretty big dictionary. So I'll probably cut ahead to when this is done, but there actually is one other thing that I can go over while that's going. So some dictionaries actually require an extra package to work with. So the WN package doesn't, but this English to Spanish dictionary actually does. So if you want to use that, or maybe there's some other dictionaries that also require this, like maybe the English to Dutch or any of the other ones. I'm not sure. I haven't actually had a look at them. So this one will require a package by the name of free dict tools. And if you try to install this, dictionary without installing that package first, you'll notice that it will fail. And the reason that's going to fail is because free dict tools is also in the AUR. So to get that to work properly, you have to install this first and then install this package. So if you're just using the English to English dictionary, that won't be a problem. But if you want any of the other like English to Spanish or English to any other language, you might need to use this. I'm not sure about the other dictionaries though. So you would have to actually check with that specific package. So that might be done by now. Yep. Okay. So I actually managed to kill enough time for that to finish. And that's only a very small package to actually install. So it'll take a couple of seconds. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to also notice that it won't work still. So the reason that it's not going to work now, it might work on your system. And that's because the default setting for this is to work with the US locale. So if you've configured your system to be in any other region, like I've got mine configured for AU, so we have to actually modify that. So the path we have to modify for that is very, very simple. So it is just this right here. So slash Etsy slash conf dot D slash dict D. And we'll bring that file up. So in a Vim buffer, we'll bring that up or in a Vim thingy, whatever, you know what I'm saying. 
And the line we're going to edit in here is this dict underscore args. So all you have to do is just change this to the locale that you've got your system set at. So if you're on another language, then you're going to have to do a bit more than I have to do. But for me, being in Australia, all I have to do is change this US to AU, and then that will work perfectly fine. Okay, so we can save this now, and that's going to be done. So we are almost finished here. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to actually start the dict service. So to do this, we just use systemctl. So if we go sudo systemctl, or if you're if you're not using systemd, then I guess you have to use something else, but you're probably gonna be using systemd unless you're one of the people who just hates it for some incomprehensible reason. And we run uh, systemctl start, and then the thing we're starting is dict dot service. We start that, and if you get no output, then it started properly. If you want it to always be running, then you can enable it instead, but I just want it started whenever I want it started. Okay, so now that that's all done, if we try to actually run dict with the D on the end, we'll see what actually happens. So this will give you an error, and I wasn't sure what this error was about because I didn't actually look properly in the Arch Linux wiki, and it's not actually there. What you actually have to do is drop the D from it. So if we just use it dict, that will then bring up this right here and it'll give you the option to help. So this isn't actually like an interactive program. You have to just run it with the options that you wanna pass into it and then it will just bring out the output. Okay, so assuming that everything works properly, we should be able to search for something. So if we write dict without the D on the end and let's say we wanna search for meme and that will work perfectly fine. So if you have other dictionaries installed, I assume it'll show the definitions in other languages. I'm not sure, I've never actually had other dictionaries installed. So one other thing that might trip you up is if you try to install another dictionary. So if you're an English speaker, you're probably never gonna have this problem. But if you're a bilingual or trilingual speaker, you might wanna install some extra dictionaries. And you might notice that it's not gonna work once you install it. And this isn't actually a problem. So. What you have to do to actually make that work is you have to restart the dict service. So all you have to do is do sudo system ctl restart and then dict.service and that will then work perfectly fine. Or your other option is obviously to restart your system or you could stop the service before installing and then start it after you've actually installed it. So you just have to make sure that somehow the dict service gets restarted and then you should be able to access that new dictionary. So I haven't used this for much. I just mainly search a word because I don't really have much of a use for a dictionary. But if you do, then there's a bunch of other cool stuff you can do in here. So I'm not even gonna go through most of this because a lot of this stuff is about how the dictionary database actually functions. So it's not stuff that I'm too interested in, but Let's see, is there anything that interesting in here? Most of this is just status stuff, like how the database is structured and where the database is located and the service of the database and the databases you have available. I don't think there's anything too important in here for actually using it as a dictionary. Yeah, no, most of this is like authentication and I didn't know this had authentication. That's actually kind of cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it really. So it just works as a normal dictionary. So you wanna search for a word, you can search for whatever. So I don't know, is Linux in here? Probably. Linux, an open source version of the Unix operating system. Okay, if we type in Unix, a trademark for a powerful operating system. Okay, that's cool. It just works as a dictionary. So you probably could integrate this pretty usefully into a nice script. Like I might do something like I've got with my Python script where I basically have a prompt up the top and then I will output the result into a little notification bubble. So if I wanna search for something, I don't have to actually be on my terminal. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but I'm really close to an airstrip. So I've been having planes go over all day and it's just been really annoying. Hopefully it doesn't get picked up too much by the mic though. I don't know, I haven't actually checked it. I don't typically look up definitions of words much and if I do, I'm probably gonna be on my web browser anyway, so I could look it up there. But if you are someone who doesn't really like having a web browser open, this is definitely a very interesting tool you can have, especially if you don't have, obviously, a paper dictionary. And this, 
will be much quicker than searching through that as well, obviously. So I should probably also mention the fact that there are some GUI frontends for Dict as well, one of which is called Golden Dict. So if you do want to use a GUI, then that is available for you. So to get this set up first, you have to actually get the main dictionary server set up. So I didn't mention this before, but Dict is a client server application. So when you're using a GUI frontend for it, basically the Dict terminal application is running as the server and then the GUI is running as the client. So basically you have to just configure the dictionary thing that you've set up during this video as the server for this. And it's only six steps. I don't have the GUI front end installed, but by the looks of it here, it should be dead simple to get installed. So I feel like you guys should be able to probably work that out by yourselves. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. I don't typically use a dictionary that much but if you're someone who I don't know maybe likes to write from Vim or something and you don't really like having to open up a browser just to search for words maybe you live within a environment without an xorg server and you don't really want to have to open up w3m for, for example and you want to just be able to do everything from your terminal or you could probably integrate this with emacs as well I don't know let me know if you use emacs and you can do that there's plenty of uses for this, and I'm sure you can come up with one of them. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you got any ideas for any random applications you want me to install and show you guys how to install if it's kind of a complicated process, let me know and I'll be happy to go over it. So if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist that this video is in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my Discord link and my library link, so if you want to chat with me or you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, then you can go check those out. I've also got my support links down there, so if you want to donate to the channel or you want to support me on Patreon, then you can do that down there. But the content will always be available for free, so don't feel pressured to actually do that. And I think that's pretty much everything for me. I've also got my Twitter and my Mastodon, so go check those out if you want to get video updates. And now that's everything, so I'm out.